Number three then from the 2022 National 5 Paper 1. Just a little two mark question again. Look, there's a cone. Volume of a cone. You'll find the form at the front if you don't know it. It says, this diagram shows a cone with a diameter all the way across the circle of 20 and a height of 60. What's its volume? And use 3.14 for pi. Well, the volume of any pyramid is a third of the area of the base times the height. It's based on a circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared, and the height would be h, but be h for any pyramid. So you should remember that, a third pi r squared h. If you don't, it's at the front. However, just putting that down doesn't get you any marks, because all you've done is copied it. So it's one third of, now start putting the figures in. The question told you to use 3.14 for pi. Now R stands for radius. That's not the radius, that's the diameter. We'll show this at the side. If the diameter is 20, the radius is going to be a half of the 20, which is 10. Now, yes, it is in centimetres, but I'll put these units in at the end. So it'll be a half of 10 squared, and the height is just the 60. Now, doing that, putting the figures in, I suppose particularly putting a 10 in instead of a 20 gets the first mark. Now, it's just a case of work that out. You can do it any way you like, but there's several sensible things you can do. Look, there's some 10s. 10s can move a point, and there's a divide by 3, and there's a number that divides by 3. So why not do them in that those pairs? So 100 times that, each time you multiply by 10, the point will move. That will change that into 314. Use that 3 to divide it into the 60. That makes that a 20. Now that's quite easy, because multiplying by 20 just says double it. And then multiply it by 10, which really just means put a 0 at the end if you've already got a whole number. Now put the units in, centimetres cubed. That gets the last mark. I don't see any mention of it saying litres, so there's no point changing it into litres. If you wanted to change it into litres, there's a thousand cc's in a litre. It'd be 6.28 litres, but it didn't ask for that. So this is the answer here. Question four then, for three marks, angles in a circle. Now, the handy thing about having this answer booklet is, of course, you can show all your answers in the diagram, and that saves the tediousness of having to write out all these angles with their names written properly in the calculation shown. Even the final answer, which normally has to be written outside, can be indicated in the diagram, as long as you mark it in quite clearly with an arc and the final size. Anyway, what does it say here? In that circle, what's the size of angle ACE? Now, one thing you could do is you could just blitz the whole diagram. Just fill in every single angle and eventually you'll get to the one that you want. Because there are various patterns here. There are triangles, there are three triangles. There are two isosceles triangles, radius, 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 and one large right angled triangle. Diameter, if it's a diameter, a triangle formed in a diameter is right angled, and they're handy because you only need to know one angle in them to find the others. In an isosceles triangle, two angles have to be the same. So, for instance, that's 68, whatever's left over, they share it. In a right angle triangle, well, you know the 90 anyway, so if you know one of them, you can get the other. So, there's all sorts of routes to getting to this answer. You could just start filling them in. You could say, right, here's an isosceles triangle. If that's 68, I've still got 112. So that's 56 each. You could do that, and then you could say there's a 90 degrees and carry on like that. Or you could say here's a straight line. If that's 68, then since that adds up to 180, just the same as that, well that's 112. Now I've got a nice osseous triangle, I can share them out. There's various ways of doing that, but I think I'll just set it out at the side tediously. First step should be, what's your target anyway? What is angle ACE? That goes from A to C, so C is the vertex of the angle. A, C, E is this angle here. Now it's made up of two parts in the diagram. One part you know. A tangent meets a radius or a diameter at right angles. So that part's 90. So in essence, this question just says, what's the size of this angle here? What's the size of angle O, C, E? So that should be the target. How can you find that? Now see, way back in the old days, when, when I was at school, 
you'd have got that straight away. That answer is 34, because there was a pattern you used to know, which was, if you had a circle, and you had the angle at the centre coming from two points in the circumference, then any angle at the circumference is half of the angle at the centre. No matter where that point is, it doesn't need to be in a straight line. So I would have looked at that and said, oh, the angle at the centre is 68, coming from these two points, so the angle at the circumference is half of 68, so that must be 34. But you can't do that. You're going to have to work your way there. So what's the plan then? Is How can you get from 68 to this angle here without using the fact that that angle is half the angle at the centre, which you don't know, but you do now. But I don't think you're able to put that down, though. Well, the two routes to get there would be either go via this straight line, knowing that those two must add up to 180. So you could do that, first of all. In other words, get this one here first. So work out angle C, O, E. Now, again, you just write that in the diagram and that's it done. If I'm not using the diagram, I'd have to write it out tediously as angle C, O, E is equal to 180 minus 68. So that's going to be 112 degrees. That would get a mark, but so would just write in 112 there. Then I could get to angle OCE because I've got an isosceles triangle. So if I know this angle is 112, they share whatever's left over. So OCE shares the remainder with that. So that'll be a half of whatever's left over, 180 minus 112. You can see what's going to pop out of this because that's you back to the 68 again. So it's half of the 68, there you go, half the angle at the centre, half of the 68, which is 34 degrees. That would get a mark. And then finally, the angle they want, ACE, well, that's made up of this one, plus the 90. So it's 90 plus the 34, so that's going to be 124 degrees. No, that was just one route. That was taking the route, if you like, in a straight line, straight from the 68 to the angle at C, going via this straight line. You could have gone round the corner instead and worked out this one first, and then gone via the right angle to get to that one. Remember, that was the ultimate target. Get this one, and then you've got the angle you want. You've got that obtuse angle there. So if you were to do it that way, you'd go for ODE first. Because ODE would be, they share what's left over. That would be a half of the 180 minus 68. So that's a half of the 112. So that's going to be 56 degrees. That would have got a mark. And then you could have got to this one that you wanted, this OCE, by saying, well, you've got a right angle triangle. And if you've got a right angle triangle, you've used up 90 already. The quick way to do that would just be to say, well, that means the remaining two must make up a right angle, they're complementary, will be 90 minus the 56, which is 34 degrees. And then you're back to this again. But what you can't do is just do it all in your head. You know, the way you could have done quite easily. You know, I would have just said, well, that's 68, so that's half of it, that's 34. Add on 90, that's 124. Put down 124, no marks. No working, no marks. So you have to have working. Either this, which is sort of the rigorous way of doing it, or just filling the angles in the diagram.